Oh, screw beautiful. I'm brilliant. If you want to appease me, compliment my brain. What's so fascinating about Christina Yang? I'd say wish me luck, but I don't need it. As this OG Grey's Anatomy team member matures over 10 seasons from a hungry young intern into a master cardiothoracic surgeon, she retains her fierce intensity, less than sunny disposition, and biting charm. I'm your new intern, Ryan Spaulding. Ugh, never gonna remember that. You're, um... Uh, 4.2. The sarcastic cardio god in training was actually created as an avatar for one of the most powerful women in Hollywood. Grey's Anatomy showrunner Shonda Rhimes modeled the character after herself. She said, I leaned into Christina, wrote her more eloquently, colored her more brightly, drew outside her lines, let her do and think and live in ways that voiced my dreams. She did not want to get married. She had a genius that she chased. She loved her work. I gave her a strident desire to not have children because while I adore children, I wanted to watch her fight that feminist battle and win. I am not this uh, beautiful vessel for all that might be good about the future. Rhymes's words speak to how Christina is the vision of living freely, making the choices that are most liberating and exciting to you personally, without worrying about how people will react. Uh, the only things in my fridge are water, vodka, and diet soda, and I don't care. Here's our take on Christina Yang's unique way of seeing the world, and what we can all take from her philosophy on life. You're completely free. You can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Make lemonade. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. A huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is the best app to help you develop new problem-solving skills and analytical abilities that you can apply to your career. They offer over 60 fun interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. Click the link in the description below, brilliant.org slash the take, to sign up for a free account now. The first 200 people that go to the link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Let's take a look at the main tenets that make up the belief system Christina Yang lives by. Above all, Christina thinks you must do what you love and love what you do. You're off work, Christina. Go enjoy your day. No, I'll enjoy my day if I can help retrieve a heart, I promise. Her pure zeal for the actual work she does is a breath of fresh air compared to shows where characters' professional drive is just about making money or their own ego. So I can try out the subannular stitches. Well, I didn't teach it to you so you could crochet. Oh my god. She's also unapologetic about her ambition and feels that to succeed, you must be a shark. You did a cutthroat thing, deal with it. Don't come to me for absolution. You want to be a shark, be a shark. Christina's dominant, take no prisoners attitude reminds us that talent or aptitude alone isn't enough. To really rise to the top of your field, you also need drive and assertiveness. Say hello to your competition. Eight of you will switch to an easier specialty. Five of you will crack under the pressure. Two of you will be asked to leave. Christina thrives in the shark tank that is Seattle Grace Hospital by actively clawing her way into the most impressive surgeries and seeking out the best mentors. If you can't give me a brilliant cardiothoracic attending who is willing to teach me, then I can't get what I need from this hospital. And while her overbearing attitude may not always come across as charming, another tenet of her philosophy is don't aim to please, aim to win. Colleagues aren't friends or competitors. Social norms tend to condition girls to be overly courteous from a young age out of fear of not being liked. But Christina bucks the expectation that women must put others' emotional needs first. Losers. And I am not a loser. She won't humbly let her achievements go unacknowledged, stay in her place, or hold her tongue. She bosses around her colleagues with an ego typically reserved for men in the workplace. Bambi, don't say another word till after the hunter shoots your mother. Meanwhile, as hard as she works, Christina plays equally hard. <laughs> Baby, you made it! The warden of Racine College, James DeCoven, first coined the phrase in the 1800s, though back then it was known as work hard, play hard, pray hard. Since then, the phrase has lost its religious connotations, becoming a moniker for an all-in approach to life. You want a second best surgeon operating on you? No, you want the very best. In his book, What Are We? Exploring the Evolutionary Roots of Our Future, Lonnie William Arson writes that humans have a legacy drive. 
a desire to leave behind a legacy, and a leisure drive, or a desire for fun. Christina pulls all-nighters to get the job done. Sleep is for wimps. Sleep is for Mercy West residents. But a key way she keeps her work drive alive is by balancing it with fun and cutting loose, from break room sex sessions... That was definitely worth being late. ...to drunken baseball games... Are you drunk? She is. We are. ...to impromptu dance sessions. She also helps the other doctors unwind. Here. We have to dance it out. That's how we finish. Christina doesn't waste time performing her emotions. I am laughing. Just not externally. She won't feign politeness, friendliness, or social niceties, or say what's expected in a given social situation. Its small features and oversized eyes trigger a hormonal response in humans. It's autonomic. It keeps us from eating them. J.L. Austin was one of the first thinkers to implicitly discuss the idea of performativity in his 1975 book, How to Do Things with Words. Austin wrote, In very many cases, it is possible to perform an act of exactly the same kind not by uttering words, whether written or spoken, but in some other way. You don't have to do that thing where, you know, I say something, and then you say something, and then somebody cries, and there's like a moment. Underneath her brusque exterior, Christina is a deeply emotional human being. How are you fine? How are you just completely fine? I'm ruined! Okay? I am dead. I am wrecked. You might even read a symbolism into the fact that she's a doctor of the heart. Do you know how much I love you? But because she's not focused on demonstrating feeling for an audience, her empathy is all the more real. Forgive him. It's not that easy. I know. Forgive him anyway. In a special Christmas episode, Christina connects by stepping outside of her own perspective to imagine what the patient might want. Live so you can grow up and have kids and, you know, raise them not to believe in Santa. When she does express her emotions, in carefully chosen moments and to the inner circle of people she cares about, they have that much more impact. There's a club. The Dead Dad's Club. I'm really sorry you had to join the club. Christina's likewise not too concerned with conventional bedside manner or proper etiquette. I don't like you. You don't like me because of Meredith? I don't like you because you're you. She lets her unfiltered thoughts flow, whether she's with a patient. Swallowing Monopoly pieces wasn't exactly a genius move. Or a colleague. All right, you know what? It's just a C that's barely surgery. A moron could do a C. Uh, no offense. Her impropriety and occasional disrespect for hierarchy can get her into trouble. You disrespected me. You mocked me in my OR. That can happen. But her bluntness can also be a magical power. You know, I don't believe in Santa either, Justin, or God. I believe in medicine. And it's a medical miracle you're alive. Christina believes in using sarcasm to navigate the world. Sarcasm is Christina's first line of defense against bullies, complex surgical procedures, serious questions... I'm serious. I'm getting a pretzel. ...and just, well, people that annoy her. Do you need a leash? Let's go! Ironically, Christina also uses sarcasm as a bridge to connect with others in difficult situations. For me, I dream about you screaming. You wouldn't stop screaming. So thank you. Her warped sense of humor brings her closer to the people she loves. Do you realize this constitutes hugging? Shut up. I'm your person. Cheekiness, wicked playfulness, and sardonic wit are how she shows caring. I hate you both. The hot-button question of whether women can have it all has been resurfacing in the past decade. We also have another problem, which is that women face harder choices between professional success and personal fulfillment. Christina, however, doesn't want it all. I really, really, really don't want to be a mother. I want to be a surgeon. And please, get it. She's never wanted children and is open about this lack of desire, even getting an abortion on primetime TV. In A Fever Dream, in which Christina imagines a marriage and two children with Owen Hunt, she seems deflated, as if she's compromised her values and what makes her happy for her husband's sake. Every day I go to work, and do my job. When I come home and do that job, I'm so tired. It's like I'm sleepwalking all the time. Christina Yang's first love is, and always will be, her career. Change my career after I'm married? What is this, 1953? Crucially, Christina is one of very few women in film and TV who doesn't regret her decision not to have kids. I choose medicine. I choose me. I choose that over the remote possibility that I might one day regret not having a child. 
so she sent the clear message that it was okay for other female viewers to feel the same. And by the way, it's all right to never want kids. Some people don't ever want kids. Still, to be fully content with the way you've chosen to live your life, you have to accept that others might not get it. It isn't about work. This isn't a scheduling conflict. I don't want to be a mother. Christina's narrow focus on her career invites accusations of selfishness and insensitivity. We live like you want, how you want, you get whatever you want all the time. Her decision to have an abortion causes a rift in her marriage that can't be overcome. We're not on the same page. <laughs> because I don't do what you want me to do. Because you had an abortion. Owen justifies his decision to cheat because Christina's life values differ from his own priority of building a family. Oh. You're gonna say that you had sex with someone because I had an abortion. I had sex with someone because I was hurt. And you wanted to hurt me back? She and Meredith also butt heads as Meredith takes the opposite path from her, choosing to prioritize her family and support her husband's career to the detriment of her own. Congratulations. You've become the thing you worship. And you became the thing we laughed at. But while others might not always approve, Christina's sticking to her guns pays off with the rewards she's wanted all along. She becomes one of the youngest ever nominees for the coveted Harper Avery Award. You are Christina Yang. <laughs> yes. And ends her run as cardio god Christina Yang, leaving for a new chapter at an esteemed medical institute in Switzerland. You've become everything I dreamed you'd be. To be at peace when everything doesn't immediately go to plan, though, Christina also learns to accept how much you can't control. Christina comes to a hard realization over the course of the series. Ambition can't solve everything. Goals and grit can ensure many successes. When it all comes down to your training, your choices, your wits, your hands, your stitch. But in an unpredictable world dictated by random events, some things simply are not in our hands. Christina learns this tough but necessary lesson about the way the world works when she's denied the Harper Avery Award due to political realities. The politics screwed you, the Foundation's relationship with us, they used you. But one of the most impressive things about Christina over time is the way that she turns hardships into strengths. Grey's Anatomy achieves its characteristic high-octane drama week after week by brutally hitting its characters with one tragedy after another. Christina suffers from numerous traumas, including being left at the altar, He's gone. performing surgery while a gunman threatens to kill her, Oh, and I can't stop. I have to keep going. No. Dealing with a bomb threat, I had to say you're gonna die today suffering a miscarriage Christina? Christina? and surviving a plane crash. Where is she? I don't know! I only have one shoe! These incidents may break Christina temporarily. I can't stop! I can't! I can't stop! Crying. She can't stop crying. But in the end, she embodies the cliché that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The best thing that ever happened me was you walking away from our wedding. It made me stand on my own two feet. In fact, without trauma, there would be no Dr. Christina Yang. Her father's death motivated her to become a surgeon so that she could save other people. My hands felt his heart stop beating. That's why I do this. It's also why I win all the contests. That doesn't mean serious trauma can be overcome through sheer willpower alone. If there's an upside to free falling, it's the chance you give your friends to catch you. This is why Christina knows it's so important to pick your people. You're my person. I am. Early on in the first few seasons of Grey's Anatomy, Christina learns the importance of putting aside her cutthroat instincts to form bonds. She even grows close to bubbly Izzy and hesitates when it comes to ratting out her friend, even if that loyalty means costing her time in the OR. Because I can't tell you what happened in that room. I can't tell you. And before, I could have. No guilt, no loyalties, no problem. And despite Meredith's steamy romance with Derek, the protagonist's soulmate on the show is arguably Christina. Derek's the love of my life, but you're my soulmate. They support each other through 10 seasons of trauma, complex surgical cases, and heartache, giving each other much needed reality checks along the way. As you weigh your options here, just you know, consider the possibility of shutting the hell up because I can't listen to it anymore. Because of the depth of their friendship, they can always trust each other to have their best interests at heart, to give the best advice, and to lift each other up. He's very dreamy, but he is not the son. You are.
what more could you want in your person? And you're my person. Perhaps what's most compelling about Christina as a character and role model is the way that she breaks the mold for both the stereotypical hardworking Asian lead. Because I grew up in Beverly Hills, the only Chinese I know is from a Mr. Chow's menu. Besides, I'm Korean. And the typical female character on screen. You know when you haven't had sex for a long time and you forget how good it is and so you want it less? Yeah, that doesn't happen to me. The model minority stereotype portrays many Asian Americans on screen as meek, submissive, unsexy nerds who just want to work hard, earn money, and stay out of trouble. Sure, Christina does have two central traits of the model minority. She works in a high-paying STEM field and is mercilessly competitive. Actually, I graduated first in my class at Stanford. But she's loud, opinionated, and even rude. Gray here is going to become a surgeon while you dig ditches by the side of the road. She's also mischievous and fun-loving. What are you- Oh my god! What are you doing?! <laughs> are you insane?! Let's make lemonade. And far from being a sexless sidekick, attracts the attention of many romantic suitors. I can do hot in my sleep. I like hot in scrubs. I'm a hot person. And she isn't particularly close to her family, subverting the assumption that Asian children must respect and obey their parents. I will help her! I am a mother. We don't do well with mothers here. Why don't you leave and come back later? Similarly, Christina doesn't worry about presenting as traditionally feminine. A self-proclaimed slob, she disdains laundry, cooking, and other household tasks, letting her apartment turn into the female version of the man cave and her male partner shoulder the burden of domestic chores. I don't wash dishes, vacuum, or put the toilet paper on the holder. I hired a maid once. She ran away crying. She speaks crudely about sexual pleasure. This is a cry for help. It's a cry for an orgasm. And takes on the stereotypical role of the non-committal male when she's the one who wants to keep her relationship with her boss, Dr. Burke, casual. It's a key. Why? Why is it a key? Are we feeling existential this morning? Well, if a key turns in a lock and no one asked for the key or even wanted the key, does it make a sound? As a leading female Korean-American character on one of TV's most popular dramas, Christina Yang sent a powerful message to both women and Asian Americans. You can do whatever you want, however you want, without feeling beholden to the unwritten rules of whatever categories you belong to. You do enjoy crossing the line, don't you? Following Sandra Oh's departure from Grey's Anatomy after the season 10 finale, fans were completely beside themselves. Ultimately, viewers remain so invested in Christina Yang because she was, and still is, a woman ahead of her time. I never wanted to work for you. I wanted to be you. She was a hashtag girl boss who didn't care about what other people thought and pursued her dreams relentlessly. One who also went out of her way to help, or rather push, her colleagues to become the best versions of themselves. Have some fire. Be unstoppable. Be a force of nature. Be better than anyone here and don't give a damn what anyone thinks. She's also a complicated individual who seamlessly interweaves the varied tenets of her philosophy according to the situation. In one moment, she's the hyper-competent, somewhat icy career woman who saves the day. Thank God you're here. Of course I'm here. And in the next, she's a caustic yet compassionate, fun-loving friend. It's in that nuanced balance that we find the groundbreaking nature of Christina Yang's character. Pretty good is not enough. I want to be great. This is The Take. What do you want our take on next? Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that offers math and science courses developed by award-winning professionals from MIT, Microsoft, and Google. If you're anything like our favorite on-screen doctors, you know that strong critical thinking skills and consistent practice are the keys to success. Brilliant makes the learning process easy. Their fun daily challenges feature games that teach you how to solve math and science problems we face in real life. And if you want to get a mental workout in logical reasoning and algebra, check out their Joy of Problem Solving course. Click the link in the description below, brilliant.org slash the take, to sign up for free. If you're one of the first 200 people to click the link, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription.